I'm not ashamed. What was Sparrow's reaction after seeing the plague of hail? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Exodus on walking through the Bible. Of his word, the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Exodus chapter 9. We're going to be reading from verses 27 to 35. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Exodus chapter 9, beginning at verse 27. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous and my people and I are wicked. Entreat the Lord that there may be no more mighty thundering and hail, for it is enough. I will let you go and you shall stay no longer. So Moses said to him, As soon as I have gone out of the city, I will spread out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease and there will be no more hail that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your servants, I know that you will not yet fear the Lord God. Now the flax and the barley were struck. The barley was in the head and the flax was in bud. But the wheat and the spelt were not struck, for they are late crops. So Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread out his hands to the Lord. Then the thunder and the hail ceased, and the rain was not poured out on the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain, the hail, and the thunder had ceased, he sinned yet more, and he hardened his heart, he and his servants. So the heart of Pharaoh was hard, neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord had spoken by Moses. In this episode, we conclude our look at the seventh plague God inflicted upon Egypt as a result of Pharaoh's refusal to let the children of Israel go, the plague of hail. Before this plague, we saw six plagues, the plague of the water of the Nile turning into blood, the plague of an overabundance of frogs brought out of the Nile, the plague of lice or ticks, the plague of flies, the plague of pestilence or disease causing death of all cattle in the field, and the plague of boils, skin ulcers that turned into running sores. Pharaoh was given a chance after each of these plagues to obey the word of the Lord, but after each time he refused, and so God continued plaguing Egypt. In our last episode, we had God actually bringing the hail upon Egypt. Everyone who was in the field, both man and beast, were struck with the hail and died. Every herb of the ground that had sprouted was struck and destroyed. Also struck were the trees breaking their branches. That the hail was able to also break tree branches and kill those in the field shows us the size and intensity of the hail, just as God had predicted through Moses. Which brings us down to verse 27. Having seen the hail and its destruction, Pharaoh again called Moses and Aaron to him. He admits to them that he had sinned, Jehovah is righteous, and that the people of Egypt are wicked. This is the first time we have Pharaoh admitting his sinful state. When Pharaoh had called Moses and Aaron before him in the past, he did entreat them for the Lord to remove the plague, but he never admitted guilt. This is truly an improvement in Pharaoh, even if it wasn't long-lasting. God had told Pharaoh that this plague would strike his heart, and it obviously did, However, we already know what Pharaoh will do once the plague is removed, showing us that while he may have admitted wrongdoing here, it wasn't done out of a genuine desire to change and serve the Lord, but in order to stop the punishment. Pharaoh pleaded with Moses to entreat the Lord in order that the thundering and the hail cease. He said that this plague was enough, and if Moses would get the Lord to stop, he would let Israel go and stay no longer. Finally, Pharaoh had agreed to let the children of Israel go fully. If the plague of frogs was removed, Pharaoh promised to let them go sacrifice in the wilderness. If the plague of flies was removed, Pharaoh promised to let them go sacrifice in the wilderness, but not go too far. Here, Pharaoh promised to completely let them go. This is how bad Pharaoh wanted the hail to stop, that he would agree to God's whole demands without any preconditions. Moses said that when he left the city, he would stretch out his hands to the Lord and the thunder and hail will stop so that Pharaoh would know that the earth is the Lord's. However, Moses also told Pharaoh that he wasn't going to be fooled either, for he knew once the hail stopped that Pharaoh would again change his mind and not let Israel go, which is, of course, exactly what happened. This plague certainly had got to Pharaoh, but not yet enough to where he wouldn't harden his heart once the plague had been removed and actually keep his word. Verse 31 and 32 again show us the Lord's mercy, even on sinful Egypt. Verse 25 said that the herbs of the field were struck with hail, and the implication is that they were destroyed. That is certainly true of the barley and the flax crops, for they had sprouted and were in the process of growing. However, the wheat and the spelt crops, spelt being a type of wheat, were not struck, for they were late crops. 
So yes, losing the barley and, a f and the flax crops would be devastating, but at least they didn't lose the wheat crops, meaning that they would have some food to eat, even if it was less. With that, our time is up for today. Lord, when we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Exodus chapter 10, verses 1 to 6, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.